to my channel. I am Canna Campbell. I really hope that you are enjoying seeing my channel back and I'm consistently publishing a fresh video for you every Thursday afternoon. So please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and that notification bell is switched on. All right, today I want to talk to you about budgeting. Now I am telling you as a financial planner for almost 20 years that budgeting is your most powerful wealth creation tool. It's going to make sure that you always stay on track. You understand your cost of living and how much passive income you need to earn, but also it's going to tell you where your money goes and you'll take back control because you'll catch yourself with any of those lifestyle creeps that don't match your value system. I can also share with you that my wealthiest and most successful clients all had budgets. They reviewed them on a regular basis and they knew exactly where their money went and that it matched their values and alignment system. So I highly recommend if you don't have a budget, make sure you do one. Now next week I will be sharing with you how to do a budget, how to manage your cash flow, and how to set up your bank accounts correctly so that you fall in love with your budget and you really value and show respect and are grateful for how your budget is helping improve your financial well-being. But in today's video, I'm going to be a little bit more proactive and share with you the seven most common reasons why people's budgets fail them. All right, reason number one is their budget isn't written down. It's floating in their head. They're like, oh yeah, I spend roughly this much money on coffees and this much is my gym membership and I spend this much roughly on clothes. That's not good enough. Your budget must be written down. Now, I don't mind whether you use an app, a piece of paper, an Excel spreadsheet or Microsoft Word or even a notepad. Make sure your budget is written down so that you can see the truth and reality of your living expenses. Reason number two of why most people's budgets fail them, and that is because they try and budget to the nearest one dollar. This is only going to set themselves up for failure and disappointment. Now, don't get me wrong, there are definitely times in your life where you may need to budget to the nearest one dollar, and trust me, I have been there. But when you cut it too fine, you are really going to make it very hard. You must have a buffer, a margin of error. So for this reason, I recommend that you try and round up each of your expenses up by the nearest 5, 10, 20, 50, $100 or even $1,000. So say for example, my gym membership is say $85 per fortnight. To give myself a really healthy buffer, I would then put that in my budget is $100 per fortnight. So see how I've created a $30 buffer in my budget to help keep it nice and safe. Reason number three why most people's budgets fail them is they have built their budget based on short-term data. Quite often our budgets fail us when those ad hoc expenses such as rego and CTP, Christmas presents, a special gift that you need to buy someone have popped up that we have accidentally forgotten about because they were a while ago since we last had to pay them. This is why I recommend that when you're doing your budget, don't go back just a couple of months worth of bank statements and credit card statements, go back 12 months. That way you capture all of your truthful and accurate living expenses. Those irregular, quarterly, biannual and annual expenses now get put back into the budget where they belong. Reason number four, why most people's budgets fail them, and that is because they are not reviewing their budgets on a regular basis. Especially at the moment with inflation absolutely crazy, and particularly around grocery shopping and energy bills, it is so important that you go back to your budget and make sure you can account for those increases in the cost of living. I recommend on a monthly or every two months, you go back and check your budgets. And also when you check your budgets, this might give you a great opportunity to find some of your expenses that you don't really love, value, use and appreciate, and maybe look at cutting them down or cutting them out so you can use that money for another expense that you might want in your budget or possibly putting towards some investing, some saving, or maybe even some retirement planning. But please make sure you check your budget on a regular basis. It's also very motivating and very inspiring because it can really give you a grounding refresh when you see how much your cost of living really is and a reminder as to how important it is to build a passive income stream to cover your living expenses or cover as much as your living expenses as you want to, to be more financially free. Reason number five, and this is a big one which I will really be focusing on next week's video, and that is having too little 
or too many bank accounts to manage your budget. Now, some people only have one bank account to manage their living expenses. Now, this does make me slightly nervous because it can give you a false sense of security and there's not much compartmentalization or clarity in your budget. There's no real definitions. And if you happen to have a low spending month and your bank account balance is quite high, you may go and spend your money on something because you've created a false sense of security and that expense you buy is not in your budget. I recommend a maximum of four to five budgets, but ideally you can actually get away with having two simple budgets, especially if you're first starting out. The two bank accounts that I recommend you have is number one is an everyday account, and that is an account that has a linked ATM debit card to that. That means that all of your daily, weekly, fortnightly, and monthly expenses come out of that account, and that is where your salary is deposited. The second bank account that I recommend is your financial float account. And this can be an online savings account if you like it, particularly if it means you're gonna save money on bank fees. But this second account covers all of those quarterly, biannual, and annual expenses. So it means you stockpile this account throughout the year, every single time you get paid, so that when your CTP and car radio comes in, you've got plenty of money plus more in that second account. Now, as I said, I will be covering this in next week's video, so make sure you are subscribed and that notification bell is switched on because you are not going to want to miss that video. Reason number six why people's budgets have failed and that is because they haven't set themselves up for success is they haven't created consistency. One of my best budgeting hacks is I treat all of my bills in the same way that I get paid. So for example, my water bill or my energy bill or my electricity bill, gas, whatever it may be, even though they are technically quarterly bills, I actually treat them in a monthly basis because I get paid on a monthly basis. So say for example, my gas bill is on average $300 per quarter. What I will do is the moment I get paid is I proactively transfer $100 per month to my gas provider. That consistency in my budget means that whenever that gas bill is due, at the end of each quarter, not only is it paid off, I know that I've got my budget under control because I've created consistency in my budget. This is so easy to stick to because I don't even think about it, I just simply do it. So in my written budget, I have $100 per month to be paid in advance to my gas provider. Now, while some providers may not give you the option of paying monthly, you can actually do it anyway using your bill of code details. And trust me, I've never had my council or Sydney Water my energy or my gas provider complain about being paid upfront in advance because my account often sits in credit and it's one less thing to worry about which feels great. Um, and then the final reason as to why people's budgets fail them is they are not being honest with their budgets. They have really downplayed the truth and reality of their lifestyle and their living expenses. They haven't put in clothing, they haven't put in their nails or their hair or you know the additional expenses that they have in their life. When you do this, you're only setting yourself up for disappointment and failure. You are okay to spend money on those things if you really love values and appreciate them. So if you have a certain lifestyle and you want to maintain it, make sure you be honest with yourself and put it in your budget. Your budget is not there to judge you or to complain or control you. It's about simply creating healthy spending boundaries that match your value system. So do not be afraid, embarrassed or ashamed about putting that pedicure, manicure, blow dry, spray tan, holiday, weekend away, designer handbag, designer clothes. If you really love value, use and appreciate them and you know that they're not jeopardizing your financial well-being and it's important to you that they be part of your life, well then put them into your budget. It's safe, it's okay. But by having this in your budget will give you great insight, clarity and direction when it comes to building greater financial wellness, security and independence in your life. All right, everyone, don't forget to make sure you are subscribed for next week's video where I'll share with you what is the best way to do your budget, manage your cash flow, and set up your savings accounts for maximum financial success. All right, everyone, let me know what you think of this video, what other videos you will like, and I will see you next Thursday. Ciao for now.